Welcome to a new test and teardown video. Here is another tube amplifier and this is of course one of the mono blocks for this pre-amplifier I just released a video about a few days ago. And uh, of course I got both of these in for service for one of my friends. So let's see what we can do about these. Um, there is a, a very uh, special story to these. They are built and designed by my father. Back in 1986 he started with this design and in 91 he uh, released an article in a hi-fi magazine about these. And uh, yeah, he worked together with a colleague and some friends. And uh, I think they made like 10, 15, 20 of these during uh, about 10, 15 years. And uh, yeah, I see them now and then. <laughs> some of my friends and uh, everybody seems to be having these. But this one's, yeah, I don't know. There should be some sort of a problem. Maybe just a loose connection or something. I can say that this is uh, almost a 20 kilo, so it's insanely heavy. Um, it's a push-pull. This is not uh, ultra-linear, uh, because he didn't really uh, discover this uh, feature uh, back in 86. But it is a global feedback system from the output uh, directly to the first uh, input uh, triode. And uh, yeah, I've of course got full documentation, all the schematics, even transformer winding instructions and so on, so on. Everything here is hand wound, all the transformers, both the power supply and the output audio transformer is hand wound. So I look really forward to digging a little bit deeper into this one. So here at the back, we can enjoy this fantastic design. And I believe we've got a uh, 4 ohm and an 8 ohm output. And uh, it's made for uh, by wiring, so you can have uh, two wires to your speakers. And we got new tubes in 2019. And uh, for some reason, some unexplained error so far, but I will go and check this out. There's a nice little sticker here uh, that says we got 25 watts. And this is, of course, uh, with a lot of margin. I plan to get into that a little bit uh, later. We can also see that they're using the photo flash capacitors for anode supply. It's uh, running uh, almost at 400 volts. And then we got some of those high current capability capacitors. So all that is super nice. I don't know if this is on or this is on. That is one thing that I'm not super happy about. I also found this one to be a little bit of a problem. And uh, there is a tube missing. This is a GZ34. And there is a relay and a... Um, charge resistor in here and there's a very very interesting circuit around this uh, and for some reason it's using diodes instead of this uh, tube to save a little bit of power in this beautiful chrome unit you will maybe see four resistors that will be the four cathode resistors and they are here because they are running really warm because um the four tubes, they run in self-bias mode. And the, the four resistors, they are 390 ohms. And we have 27 volts of uh, grid cathode voltage for these uh, tubes at 70 milliamps. So you can uh, imagine we are running uh, quite warm resistors. Also, with 70, <laughs> 70 milliamps per tube at 360 over the tube. That will be 25 watts of uh, anode dissipation per tube. So that will be 50, that will be 100 watts of anode dissipation plus the filaments. So, yeah, 
we are running definitely uh, a little bit hot. Did I tell about the three tiny little tubes here? What you see here is an input a differential amplifier. So we have the input on one of the two triodes and the other one is the global feedback. The other two triodes here and two triodes there, that will be the two driver tubes for two and two output uh, tubes, okay? And they are in this classic SRPP configuration. And it's all DC coupled, all this directly from the input. And then of course to drive the four grids, you need to have a capacitor. That's just uh, how it is. Oh dear. <laughs> I think I found the problem already. Just look inside here and have a little guess. What do you think is the problem? Yeah, we definitely got some leak capacitors around everything here, right? So what is going on Yeah, I will have to figure that out. And uh, yeah, like I said, we got a little relay and a capacitor here. This is the slow start. And then that's of course for the signal tubes. And uh, here we got the diodes for the high voltage supply instead of this big hefty rectifier tube. And that will be the slow start uh, resistor, I would imagine. It is not exactly the value that I saw in the schematic, so... Well, well, I kind of like the short distance. Look at that. The output goes directly from the transformer to the connectors here. And those are really, really good stable connectors, by the way. And that will be our audio input. And it goes to the first tube directly, as you can see here. That is just really nice. Teflon wires as well. Yeah, but so far, I think I'll try and pull all this apart and uh, see if I can figure this out. So after a little bit of a clean up and some new capacitors, it's a, this is a classic annoying problem with those modern capacitors and axial uh, capacitors. But I managed to fit these in here and I think this is going to be fine. I bent them a little bit to the right so they are a little bit further away from all the warm parts over here. Also, if you uh, look at the previous uh, picture and now, you will probably see uh, a lot of stuff happened. And the filament wires, they are now following the forward and the return. So the loop here is as small as absolutely possible. And you see, I managed to put everything together here, even the entry of filament supply and then filament goes there and see, so close. And also, this is, of course, the cathode wires to the cathode resistors. And I managed to take these a little bit away from other signals. And also, the grids, the grid signals, they were just around the filament wires. I mean, I really don't want filament current to go along my grid. Of course, there's a global feedback uh, of about 60B. But I don't want to take advantage of that uh, to remove my hum that I created myself, right? So better take those grid signals away so they don't uh, cobble um, your high current filament. So what else can I say about this uh, unit? You can, of course, see this little circuit board. So instead of using old point-to-point uh, -point technology, um, they made a nice little circuit board and I of course got all the 
documentations and the schematics and all that kind of stuff so i can show the little documentation sheet about how is this board made and how is everything uh, connected to the three signal tubes here i kind of like the way with the wires and the numbers up uh, here at the end of the circuit board to the tube sockets like that so it's still a little bit of a wire job but still in a nice uh, order and everything here so you don't make any mistakes also the power supply is quite interesting i should probably show a little schematic of the power supply and the power supply is uh, there is, is originally this uh, gz34 a rectifier tube and then it warms up and then it charges the capacitors and then when the main tubes they warm up it, sta it starts to use anode current and then this anode current through a sense resistor is what pulls the relay isn't that fascinating so it's a timing dependent on warm-up so when you have the warm-up it swaps over to the diodes silicon diodes over here and then but it's still powering the filaments and all that in this uh, rectifier tube so it's still looking good and uh, there is a change that i haven't yet figured out i found a few schematics trying to explain how it works but i haven't yet uh, understood completely how it should work but at least there's probably this resistor across here and this is maybe what is causing a serious resistance to from the diodes to that uh, to the main capacitors and then it's probably just uh, not swapping anything over because of this blue wire here shorts the relay actually so it's just uh, always charging the main capacitors using this resistor that is at least what i think and also in the power supply we see those four big jensen capacitors and they are, are for the positive auxiliary and the negative auxiliary supply and that is also very interesting about how this uh, unit here needs a positive and a negative auxiliary supply because of the input stage is dc coupled so here i will just show a little a schematic that uh, shows uh, how everything is orientated uh, how stuff is wired up uh, to find the the way around here and the length of uh, wires and uh, all those kinds of things and here is the amplifier schematic with a few component values missing but i think it's just because they are the same all over again and again so we don't need to repeat them too much but you can see the input is in the bottom left that goes to the bottom triode of the first input tube of course and then there is this global feedback and you can see if we remove this global feedback you'll get about 60 dB more gain so that is how this feedback system works and then you will see the two SRPP drivers uh, with no signal capacitors in the uh, signal path but only the output uh, from them to the uh, main uh, power pentodes this is where you need uh, those uh, coupling capacitors obviously because there is a, a bit of uh, DC difference in this system you also see the four uh, cathode resistors they are 390 uh, ohms and we got 27 volts over them and that makes uh, all this uh, calculations about uh, how many watts uh, dissipated over each tube it's uh, quite easy to figure out we got about 60 milliamps over this resistor and uh, what have we uh, 360 volts and 60 milliamps so it's 25 watts per tube anode uh, loss because there isn't really any dc drop in the uh, transformer so uh, yeah that is a uh, yeah a 100 watt uh, anode loss in total in those four tubes 
Here I will show you some pictures I found. My father took some pictures of some of the, yeah, just a few of the units he made, uh, both in a black and uh, using different tubes and also this uh, chrome version. He took it for a uh, nice photography uh, location and got some really cool pictures as well. I think some of those pictures they were used in the article and I will of course put a link to the article and uh, probably some other links in the description. So please go there and have a look. Look at that picture. We got everything nice and up and running. And I just measured all the four cathode voltages and they are more or less around 27 volts. And we of course got a nice beautiful output. So I'm really, really excited about this. <laughs> I will of course write down all the gain and all the stuff and what uh, not. And then I will uh, fix the other one. And then I can listen to some music. That's gonna be fan. Fantastic, but I really don't want to make this video so much longer. I think this was more or less all I wanted to show you about this beautiful amplifier. So thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you soon again. Bye bye.